Do you think a hell exists in the afterlife, or is it a concept purely created by human beings? Let's find out. I'm Dr. Prashant Sharma, and welcome to Finding Om. That's A-U-M, Awareness, Understanding, and Mastery, the channel where we combine spirituality and mental health to live a more meaningful life. As some of you guys know, I am very interested in the phenomenon of near-death experiences, or NDEs, because I think it can give us hints about the afterlife. Our very first episode was about NDEs, and I will be referring to the study I talked about back then. If you're interested in that, feel free to check out that particular episode. Anyway, I found myself thinking about one of the findings from the study. There was a subset of patients who described experiencing something very interesting, and I want to read you one of their accounts right now. One of the participants stated, I went into a dark place with nothing around me, but I wasn't scared. It was really peaceful there. I then began to see my whole life unfolding before me like a film projected on a screen, from babyhood to adult life. It was so real. I was looking at myself, but better than a 3D movie, as I was also capable of sensing the feelings of the persons I had interacted with through the years. I could feel the good and bad emotions I made them go through. And there were numerous participants who described this specific type of life review, which is that they were able to feel the emotions of others they had interacted with, good and bad emotions, exactly how they made people feel during their lives. And so this got me thinking about the truly evil people who are out there in the world. When they die, it is certainly possible that they would have to do such a life review and feel all of the emotions and mental anguish they caused to people over the course of their lives. One of the things I've never really been comfortable with is the idea of a finite heaven and hell. It's too binary, positive or negative, yes or no. And it just never made sense to me that there would be a judgment of a person's life based on just one life, which would send them to either place for eternity. We certainly can't learn enough in one life to be perfect or enlightened or anything close to that. At the same time, when we do bad deeds in life, how do we learn from them if we are never punished or made to feel what the other person felt? Well, in the life review, we can. And like I said before, none of us are perfect. All of us have hurt someone in life at one point or another, and we will have to feel the emotions of that person when we move on beyond this life. So what I'm thinking is this is a much more logical version of hell. Like I mentioned before, truly evil people will have an extremely difficult time having to feel the mental and physical anguish of all the people they've hurt. So when we think about murderers or other violent offenders, even more infamous people, like Hitler or Bashar al-Assad, president of Syria, or other human rights violators or war criminals, they will have a terrible time. And remember, the people in the study had these life reviews which seemed long, but in our world may be occurring in seconds or minutes. This means that on that plane of existence, time is not linear, or it is at least relative, so even within the span of a short time, the Hitlers of the world will have to go through years of physical and mental anguish based on what they did to other people. And so this would be their hell. At the same time, it's not eternity. There is an end to the life review no matter how long it takes, and there will be a chance for that soul to learn what they did wrong. This means there may be redemption for the most evil people in the world, which is uncomfortable to think about for us. We can't imagine someone like Hitler being redeemed. Now, obviously, this is all conjecture and theories on my part, but interesting to think about. Now, on the topic of redemption itself, I think as a society, we do think in black and white when it comes to, for instance, our legal system. If someone commits a felony, they go to prison, they come out, and it's extremely challenging for them to get a job. They would likely have to find a Pathways-type program of some sort, as well as an employer who is willing to give second chances. And then, on the other side of the spectrum, violent offenders may be in prison for life or be executed. Now, why is that? Yes, the obvious reason is punishment, of course. But maybe, maybe it's an admission of our species that we don't have any way to fix these people. We don't have a strategy to rehabilitate someone that violent. They are just too far gone. 
And look, I'm not saying we forgive them and release them. That's not what I mean. But I think we have to acknowledge that as a society, there are plenty of crimes that we feel people can be rehabilitated from. I think most people think so, especially when it comes to illegal drug use or theft, things like that. But there is a threshold where once someone moves past it, we just don't know what to do with them. So we lock them away and throw away the key or we end their existence, which then means there needs to be a way to force them to learn or evolve in the afterlife. And this is where I think the life review that I mentioned might play an interesting role. We can think about the souls who commit atrocities as primitive beings who need to experience the full extent of the emotions of other people, which would possibly allow them to evolve. Adding to the evidence for a life review is a phenomenon that has been described since the 19th century by physicians, which is terminal lucidity. Basically, what happens in some people at the end of their lives who may be delirious because of their medical conditions or medications, or even people who have dementia, may have minutes or hours of a return of mental clarity. Suddenly, they can recognize their loved ones, form complete sentences, say goodbye, things like that. I've seen this myself when I was an intern on a hospice unit in Ohio many years ago. It certainly is a very useful concept for many reasons, one of which being it allows the individual dying and their loved ones to get a better sense of closure before they move on. This terminal lucidity may be signaling the start of a life review because often it is during these times that people describe seeing memories from their distant past. Now, from a scientific standpoint, the cause of this terminal lucidity is unclear, but there has been a hypothesis that it may be due to discharge of neurotransmitters, which then act on some of the remaining circuits of the medial prefrontal cortex and hippocampus, thus promoting memory retrieval and clarity. This is untested, of course, but it is a theory. Another strong possibility is that during emotionally stressful events, adrenaline is released in the body, which can lead to retrograde enhancement of long-term memory. This is also why people with PTSD will have flashbacks from long ago memories because this adrenaline is being released and is leading to this memory retrieval as well as hyperarousal and hypervigilance. All right, so let's relate all of this back to mental health and well-being. So in general, I think that as humans, we're really tied to our physical bodies and we all at some point or another fear death. As a species, we are very uncomfortable with the notion of impermanence, that everything in this world, including we, are impermanent. Plenty of people fight against it by trying to amass wealth or doing other things, but nothing really relieves the uncertainty. Because in the end, none of us know 100% what is going to happen after we die. There certainly are plenty of theories like the one I talked about today, but again, it is unknown and I've had plenty of patients who have a fear of death or more specifically, a fear of what happens after we die. And I think that at the least, we can look at the evidence from the studies on NDEs, we can read people's experiences and we can glean from all of this information that certainly there is an afterlife of some sort and that there are common themes across all NDEs regardless of that individual's religion, culture, language spoken, or even if they're an atheist. So there is a common thread here, a common thread that runs through everyone's near-death experiences. And it is hinting to us that there is something beyond these physical bodies. And maybe when we meditate on this, we can be somewhat more comfortable about our inevitable deaths. So those are some of my thoughts on the topic, but what do you guys think? Comment below and share your thoughts on NDEs, heaven, hell, and the afterlife. Do you believe the life review can be a kind of hell in itself? Or do you believe in the traditional concept of hell? Or perhaps you have another theory altogether on hell. Let me know. I truly enjoy discussing theories and concepts with you guys in the comments. I also wanted to say thank you for the views, comments, likes, all the feedback I've received so far on the channel. I truly appreciate it. All right, folks, that's it for this episode. I'm Dr. Prashant Sharma, and this is Finding Aum, that's A-U-M, Awareness, Understanding, and Mastery, where we combine spirituality and mental health to live a more meaningful life. Thank you for watching, and remember, love everyone and tell the truth. Till next time, friends. Mm -hmm.